Every year near the end of ordinary time, just before Advent begins, uh, we have readings that speak about the end of the world. That's what Jesus is talking about, kind of almost bleak images from that gospel. Jesus says that all that you see here to the crowd, will, there will, days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Jesus brings up this end of time imagery. And of course, people are immediately interested. And I think we tend to be as well, those kinds of ideas. You know, we believe as part of our faith that Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead, as, it's, as we say in the creed. And that that will be the end of time as we know it here on earth. And our world will pass away to something more heavenly. And the people at Jesus' time, they ask him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be that will tell us that this is about to happen? You know, we might have the same wonder. Well, when is this going to occur? We want to know. And there's plenty of even you know, movies that we see that try to you know, put forth some kind of idea of what could cause the end of the world. Everything from global natural catastrophes to incurable diseases to alien invasions and zombies. While a lot of those, though, are pretty much fantastic and, and fictional, there's other people who will claim that, that we ourselves are going to bring some kind of end to the world. Disaster to our planet by our misuse of the world around us or technology or science. In the first reading from the prophet Malachi, he says, Lo, the days are coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and evildoers will be stubble, and, the day, and that day is coming that will set the world on fire. So what exactly are we supposed to believe about the end of time? Do we listen to the voices that say the end is near when bad things happen? Well, Jesus has told us he's going to return. And we know his return will be public. There won't be any question when he comes as to whether it's him or not. We'll know. And Jesus' return will mark the end of time, the end of the way the world is for us now. But the world will end not by anything that we ourselves do. But it will be because of an intervention by God himself. And so in a sense, we do live right now in end times because at any moment, the next few minutes or years from now, Jesus could return in glory. But his return will be accompanied by circumstances that are beyond our control and so beyond our ability to know exactly when. First in the gospel, Jesus you know, was asked about what kind of signs might warn us because, you know, an event like that we want to be ready for. We want to know what's going to happen. And sometimes people will look at bad events occurring and, and think, well, doesn't that mean that maybe the end is near? Maybe it's going to happen. Well, Jesus is affirm that, affirms there that there will be events of conflict between good and evil, that there will be things like wars and insurrections. Nations will rise against nation, he says. There'll be earthquakes and famines and plagues, awesome sights and mighty signs coming from the sky. But don't we see those things happen pretty much in every generation? Don't we see all those kinds of bad things occur again and again and again? We wish they wouldn't, but we live in a fallen world. And Jesus says that when those things do occur, it won't yet be the end. None of those things are going to directly predict when Jesus will come again in glory. And Jesus also says that, you know, there will be people that try to speak up in his name, that try to claim that we should follow them, that they're representatives of our faith. And he says, don't be fooled. Don't follow them. Jesus also says there could be times of persecution against the faith. He says they will put some of you even to death handed over by kings and governors, even family members. He says it will lead to some give, having to give testimony. 
And this word testimony is, is the word martyrdom, actually. And so we've seen this in the past, where Christians have had to give their lives for the faith. And it's actually still happening even right now today in different places around the world. But even those don't mean this is exactly the end, the time when Jesus will come. He says all these things will happen in any generation because good is trying to overcome evil. But only afterwards will he return. See, Jesus isn't trying to satisfy our curiosity as to knowing exactly what's going to happen in the future, to pro- but instead protect us from becoming discouraged when bad things happen, to not to be dis- surprised. It's a call for us to trust in Him. You know, God, of course, doesn't desire all these bad things to happen, but this is a promise that He's going to be with us through them all. Our faith helps us understand many things, but too often, you know, I can be curious as to, you know, what exactly is going to happen in the future, because I want to be the one in control, when in reality, God's the only one in control of our futures. So Jesus' message in here is for us not to be afraid. Even Even if we undergo persecution, he says, not a hair on your head will be destroyed. God will never leave us. He says, I I myself will give you a wisdom in speaking that your adversaries will be powerless to resist. St. Paul, in the second reading, recommends that not to get caught up as to when this may occur, but to simply continue to be faithful and do our daily work, both in our earthly activities as well as in growing in relationship with God. We must remain as God's faithful disciples. By perseverance, he says, you will secure your lives. So the conclusion of of human history, whether it may occur today yet or many years from now, is put before us as this divine event that God himself will bring about when Jesus returns. He'll return in a public way. We'll know that it is him, and it won't be by our doing will be by his alone we live now in these kind of end times because he could come at any moment of course there will be events of conflict between good and evil that will occur and it will be not really possible for us to predict exactly the moment that he comes but rather than worry or be anxious about that we're to place our future in his hands and continue to work hard both here for earthly things as part of our families as well as leading us to God. We must be ready. And if we continue to draw close to Jesus while we're still here on earth, then that transition of whenever he comes in glory, where it'll just simply be finally seen face to face the one whom we already have come to love. During our time as we prepare for and think about how Jesus may return, we place our lives and our futures with great trust in his hands.